ready-made maths, YouTube and mathematics training. Teacher and teaching assistant training. This week, we are looking at EYFS and readiness for mastery. Today is part two. Yesterday, we looked at arranging items and amounts and different objects in different ways. What we're doing today in part two is looking at the tens frame and how we can use tens frames in many different ways to develop children's sense of number. Day two, or part two of the training, is very much about one particular image, the tens frame. In the mastery curriculum, it's probably the most powerful image that's used uh, in early years in key stage one to keep children with that sense of 10, 10 and a bit, five and a bit, how the numbers link together, and how you can manipulate numbers in different ways uh, to see them uh, in lots and lots of different arrangements. I've also referred to it as egg box maths because we often use the egg box as the way to kind of hold whatever that we're counting or whatever number uh, we're exploring. So what we're going to see uh, today are lots of little visuals, different tens frames, different images, and we're going to really explore how the tens frame can be used to let children see the power of smaller numbers. Welcome back to the ready-made early years training. Earlier on, uh, we looked at the idea of setting things out in arrangement style. We started off with a random style, we moved into line style, we then developed that into five style, and we ended up with 10 frame style. Just to recap that from the, the previous training, what we're gonna do is look at the jewels now on the table, which at the moment are a complete random mess. They're a random style, so we're gonna put them in a straight line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we're then going to arrange them into five and a bit. So five style, which is five and three. And then we're gonna make it even more uh, consistent by putting them into tens frame style, where you can now see the five counters and the three counters, the five gems and the three gems, which gives me a total of eight. If you wanna show that as a display, and the great thing is, if you do get hold of the TTF gems resource, you can actually, um, you can even replicate color wise. So if I wanted to say, create my uh, eight like that, whereas I've got, it's quite a, quite a nice little arrangement there really. Um, so I can actually see two different things going on here. And it's lovely, if you've got an arrangement like this, you can get a lot out of the children. They started off random, we've now created this idea of a tens frame, but what you can now see, you can see the four jewels over here, and the four jewels over here, or you can see the five jewels on the top, and the three jewels underneath. We can now see there are two spaces, you can see there are two spaces that we need to fill in order to get to 10. So again, these cards are quite nice, but you don't need to you know, buy resources. You could quite easily use any resource yourself. Get yourself on the internet. If you're using shoes, for example, or pasta or conkers, conkers is quite a nice one to do in the autumn. Get yourself on the internet, print some pictures of conkers out uh, in different colors or different shapes or different sizes, and you can still do uh, this sort of activity uh, yourself. Again, if I rearrange things slightly, and again, um, if I've now created this sort of image, and children may well do this, how many are they there? Well, you can see that they're eight, because there are five on the top and three on the bottom. But because of the way they've been arranged, there's now a lot more flexibility. We can see two, 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 uh, and two. We can still see two less than 10. So I've got two, four blues, and I've got two, four uh, reds. Uh, what I've also got is I've got six over here and two over here. I've got five on the top and three on the bottom. That's why the tens frame arrangement is so powerful. And that's what we're going to be spending our time looking at in this session. All aboard the tens bus. Now you're about to see very shortly um, some of uh, far better at tens buses than the one that I managed to create. But I've made good use of this for many, many years, this particular image. I just found um, a basic cartoon picture of a bus uh, on the internet and I just copied the tens frame over the top of it. But the value of that is fantastic because you know, I've, I've printed many different types of characters off over the years that have been inside the tens bus. I've also used some of the number fun characters uh, and put them in as well. Uh, and just to have activities where the children are moving things around and filling up a tens bus. Sometimes the tens bus is completely full and a new bus will arrive. So I went into um, tens and ones or teens numbers. Sometimes the top uh, row of the bus will be full and the, the bottom row maybe will have three on. There's just many, many ways we've got children getting on and off the bus. You can turn it into word problems uh, and so on. But obviously there's other, there's other um, visual images you can use other than the bus. 
So what we're doing really is taking that egg box tense frame idea and adapting it into a real life scenario. It's far better for children to have a bus journey that means something and they can really talk about who's at the front of the bus, who's at the back of the bus, who's on the top row, who's on the bottom row uh, and so on. Uh, are the children sitting together or are they apart? Um, you can have children, you know, one sitting above and one sitting below on the bus as if they're uh, above and below each other in real life. Uh, again, you have two children sitting next to each other and two children sitting at the back in the space in the middle. There's, the world's your oyster, really. It just depends what context you want to use. You may not want to use a bus. You may want to use something completely different. What you can see now are four of the propeller um, tense frames that have been downloaded. As, as I mentioned in the previous session, these are not expensive to buy. They're probably around about two pounds. For two pounds, there are actually seven different tense frames that propeller education have created. I've been using tense frames myself for many, many years. My tense frames normally look like this, as we saw last week uh, in the uh, Key Stage 1 training. So if I was trying to show eight counters or eight cubes, this is what it would normally look like in a Key Stage 1 lesson, or it would look like that. Again, there's a lot of discussion about is it better to organise them vertically or horizontally? The general answer to that is it doesn't really matter. What you want the children to have is a sense of ten. So you want them to see that it's eight, five and three, or you can see eight, five and three. I will show you shortly, using the egg box itself, how I tend to teach it initially, but then we'll develop it into looking at it both ways. Yesterday, I went for the idea of one, two, three, four, five, and then underneath six, seven, eight. Conventionally, that tends to be the way that most schools do it. Might not necessarily be the best way, but that's how most people tend to do it. The other alternative is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, we'll look at that shortly. But in early years, we don't want to be using cubes in an egg box. Egg boxes are brilliant. We can definitely have egg boxes and put different things in, but try to avoid cubes. Try to have something that's a bit more meaningful to the children. This is a lot more meaningful. We don't even need to put anything in an egg box because we don't have an egg box. What we've got are four different tense frames. I will show you the others shortly. We've got the pirate ship. We've got the sheep in a field. We've got the school bus and we've got the prisoners in a jail cell. I'm going to pause the video now, or you're going to pause the video, and I'd like you to look at those different images, and number one, tell me what you can tell me about the images. Number two, how many are there in each? And number three, how many more do I need to fill the bus, fill the cell, fill the field, and fill the pirate ship? Just pause the video now and have a look. Hopefully you've had a chance to look at those four different images. I think the first thing that we'll do, before I look at them individually, is we'll just see how many there are on each. We can see there are eight pirates, five on this side of the um, pirate ship mast and three on this side. How many more do I need to fill it up? Two more. So if I fill two more, we've filled our tens frame. We'll look at the sheep. How many sheep? We can see five white and two black, but we can also see a total of seven with three more needed to fill the field. We'll meet those shortly. We move over to the school bus. How many children on the bus? Six, five on the bottom and one on the top. Or, as we actually had at the time, five on the top and one on the bottom, either way around. And how many prisoners have been captured and are in the jail cell? Well, uh, there are five in the top row of the jail cell and four in the bottom row. Again, I can move that around. Uh, five in the bottom row of the jail cell uh, and four in the top. Whichever way I arrange them, it really doesn't matter. I'm always seeing the five and four makes nine I'm always seeing the one space that makes 10. If I look down at the school bus, I can have five and one that way, I can have five and one that way, I can have five and one this way, or I can have five and one this way. It's so nice because it's very obvious, it's what children, how children may well sit on a school bus, and you can always see the five and a one. The similar thing would be the sheep or the pirates. Let's briefly look at each of them individually. Love the pirates. Um, there's quite a few different pirates with different features on there uh, and the children could actually see which are the twins. Can they spot the pirates that are twins? Uh, there are a couple of pairs of twins there which is quite nice, those two are the same. Now, I don't actually know they're not, one's got an eye patch and one hasn't but we have got twins uh, that are here. So there are quite a few different pirates but there are also some uh, that do look the same. So can they spot the difference uh, and so on. I could add another two pirates and actually complete it if I want to and again you can see now we do have a, we have, a, we have, a, we have some triplets now, uh, three pirates are all the same there uh, as well. What's also really nice about the pirates is that uh, Propeller do create another resource called Busy Boats. The Busy Boats allow us to actually put those characters or any other characters and actually move them from a pirate ship. Let's imagine the pirates have taken over 
uh, the boat, and they've now moved uh, into this boat instead. I can pick them up properly. And there we go. So I can put the pirates from one to the other. What's lovely about the two different boats is one of them is a vertical image uh, and one's a horizontal image. We've now got eight pirates in there and two pirates uh, not there yet. We can create um, the double forward image, which is like the Numicon image, which is also really nice. And we can even move the pirates around and leave uh, the, um, the different spaces. Let's move up to the sheep image. Now I did deliberately put that one as five white and two black. I could have manipulated them and mixed them up, but I thought that was quite a nice way to see them. What I love about the sheep is a little bit like the pirates where there are, there are different ones. There are 10 different sheep that are provided. And again, you can print these off as many times as you want. So you can have uh, twin sheep as well. At the moment, I've just, I have just printed off the 10 basic sheep. And if I do fill the sheep pen up, what you can see now is the different types of sheep. We've initially got two rams. Uh, which are here, one looking one way and one looking the other. Uh, we've got the very contented sheep down here. We've got the sheep that's uh, sticking his tongue out and we've got the white sheep that's uh, eating some grass and whose eyes you can't see. So you've got that one who's got the eyes closed. You've got these three with their eyes open and this one where you can't even see their eyes. Two black sheep, one that's smiling and one that's not smiling, um, both with their eyes open. One brown sheep, just one individual brown sheep. Another white sheep, but this one with a grey face. Again, which has got its eyes closed and is also not looking very happy. This one's got its eyes closed, but he's looking quite happy. And our final one that's looking a little bit sheepish. Um, <laughs> I do apologise for that joke. Uh, has got no fur. He's just been uh, been sheared, and so that sheep's obviously looking a little bit a little bit sheepish, uh, and uh, has got you know a different expression uh, on its face as well. I'll take those three off now. And again, you can have just as much fun talking about the sheep and doing a what's the same, what's different activity as with the counting. But no matter how I arrange them, five and two, five and two, five and two, five and two. And again, I'm always seeing seven sheep, five white and two black, five on this side, two on this side, and three more that get me to 10. Moving over to the other two images. My favorite image out of all the ones that Propeller have created is the school bus. I like it the most, probably because it's, it's, it's a little bit bigger than the other images. And so you've got a, you know, a really nice visual that takes over almost uh, the entire school bus. What I also particularly like about the school bus is that all of the children are different. So all these additional children that you can add uh, onto the bus all look completely different. And so there's loads and loads of discussion you can have about the actual characters. So again, the children will just talk about them. They'll explain, you know, the character who's got a hat on, you've got the character with a headband, you've got different hairstyles, different hair colors, different t-shirts, you've got the boys and the girls, you've got different races and nationalities. So you've got so much different ethnicity in there as well uh, that you can build in. And again, if you print out more than one bus, uh, you can actually introduce more characters and put them uh, onto a second bus, uh, which I, I often like to do when I'm going beyond 10 uh, later in the year. This does give me the opportunity to introduce a very bad version uh, of the school bus. Um, this is what I used to use, which is one that I created myself uh, from the internet. Uh, I just basically went into Word, um, found a bus, printed it out, and then put a 10 frame uh, over the top. I just used to use my own characters on top of that. Obviously the propeller one uh, is far more exotic, um, but and far more attractive to look at, but just using the two for the time being. This is the dodgy school bus that came along the following day uh, when the first one was full. We're now moving into year one really, but we can see a full bus of 10, another bus of seven. We've now got 17 pupils, another three uh, would obviously uh, get us up uh, to 20. I would probably print off several more of these uh, and use uh, these ones uh, rather than my own version. But I will give you copies of this uh, on the Dropbox folder if you do want to print uh, a simplified version. Personally, I'd be spending the two pounds or so and printing these off. Last but not least, we've got the jail cell. Jail cell, how many people? Nine. One more person will make 10. You've just got nine prisoners that have been locked up in jail. Uh, again, you can create your own characters if you want. Uh, you know, you can print off um, cartoon images if you prefer those, or you can use the images uh, that are actually provided uh, as well. Uh, it's just another way of showing uh, 10. I'm going to link those two uh, resources shortly uh, into some songs uh, as well. Just thought I'd show you uh, the other two uh, propeller images that do come with the 10 frame pack. You've got the space rocket that contains astronauts, uh, which is a vertical 10 frame. And you've got Jack and the Beanstalk, which again, a lot of children learned that story in early years. 
So what's lovely about this is you've got these 10 leaves. Now you can actually lose some leaves if you want and actually have eight leaves on there as well. Or you can lose the leaves from the top and have your eight leaves that way. So you can actually build this image up and start with smaller numbers and build it up in a more, I would probably use this one as a more Numicon style image rather than the five and a bit where I build it up leaf by leaf as we're climbing the beanstalk. There's seven leaves, there's eight, there's nine and there's 10. But what's lovely about this is you've also got potential to put characters onto the leaves. So if you want, I don't know if your pirates have arrived um, and they want to go on there, they can actually start climbing the beanstalk. Or if you want um, the children from the bus who've vanished, there they are. The children from the bus can also uh, be put onto the beanstalk or the children in your class can be put onto the beanstalk uh, as well. Entirely up to you or you can just play around with the beanstalk image uh, and build it up. Uh, I love the idea of doing it and obviously it links in with stories uh, as well. As we've just seen, the Propeller 10's frames are really, really nice to look at uh, and really good visuals. Uh, the Propeller 10 frame um, downloadable resource that you can see here has all seven 10's frames in uh, can be got directly from their website. I'll just take you down, just very quickly take you on uh, to the Propeller website. It's just propeller.education. If you want to get hold of them, you just basically go to shop, go to product range, and then you can see here there's a downloadable section. On the downloadable section, that takes you to all the different downloadable resources. Oops, I accidentally clicked on the wrong one there. Uh, you can see here real life 10 frames. £2.50, that's all it costs. Uh, well worth a download. Uh, and you can see, um, just basically go on there and get yourself a license, uh, and then you can download all of those 10 frames. Uh, it's probably well worth uh, having a look at some of the other resources as well. Uh, mainly for Key Stage 1 and 2, you'll notice that they do uh, games, they do um, Key Stage 2 multiplication games, place value games, but there are also some other things later on that are relevant to early years in Key Stage 1. The busy boats, the cupcakes, and the card beads uh, are full of nice ideas to develop mathematical number sense uh, for younger children. And you can see those there, uh, including uh, the price. We've looked at the busy boats earlier, but there's also some activities that go with them. Uh, there's cupcake activities, but also the facility to print your own cupcakes off and print your own boats off. And similarly, we've not looked at the card beads, but they're like the abacus idea, where you can print off your own version of the abacus uh, and create your own kind of uh, bead wall. If you do want to get anything from Propeller, um, there's a discount code there, SON17, uh, and that gives you 5% uh, off any of their products. Uh, the other company that you've seen a lot of uh, this week is Sweet Counter. Sweet Counter um, is linked closely to Propeller, and they're part of the same parent company, and they create uh, the, doubt, the actual uh, physical cupcakes that you can buy, the card versions, which are absolutely superb. There's also the sunflowers that we've used. Uh, there's 10 green bottles, which we've not used those these week. Uh, it's quite nice. You've got half empty and empty and full. Uh, you've also got the numbers 1 to 10 uh, that go on there as well. And the ladybugs, which I used last week uh, in the key stage, uh, one training for number bonds to 10. There's many, many other things on the Sweet Counter website. There's probably about 50 different math resources. They're all really, really um, engaging, good to look at uh, card resources that you can print off uh, and use in class. If you're interested in anything from them, uh, there's a 20% discount code that you can use uh, there uh, as well. As we just mentioned as well, you can create your own uh, egg box uh, image and you could do something completely different to the ones that we've looked at from Propeller. Um, I've been into many, many schools where I've seen the egg box image with a 10 frame image just set up in so many different ways. Uh, these are just some of the examples that I've seen in different places. The car park is brilliant where teachers have set up uh, a five by two car park and the children can put the cars in, in a 10 frame style. Um, classroom tables where 10 children sit around the table. Uh, and again, I've seen that done with children's own photographs. The jewellery box is lovely, where you can have lots of different jewels that are put into a, a basic jewellery box frame. Um, there's camel enclosures, the sheep pen, a zoo, a dinosaur park, all very similar. Um, I've definitely seen schools where it's been up on the wall, which has got the re registration for the children in the morning. Uh, and the actual uh, registration uh, photographs have been put there uh, in a tennis frame image. Uh, alternatively, reading charts and reward charts when the actual ticks and, uh, and, and, and uh, badges that are put on there, they can be put on uh, in a 10 frame style as well. Last but not least, I just left this one up here. Why not create your own with cardboard boxes? Uh, again, there was a, a couple of schools in Lancashire that I've been into uh, that have actually created on the floor 
seven or eight different sized tens frames using cardboard boxes, uh, using like Amazon boxes and so on, or shoe, shoe boxes. Uh, and so they'll have a tens frame created with boxes that you can fit marbles in, uh, tens frames created with boxes that you can fit tennis balls in, um, even bigger boxes you can fit footballs in. And I've even seen the kind of, um, um, what they call the, the fruit and veg boxes that you can get from uh, supermarkets, the long, uh, thin ones, which children can actually sit in and they can actually sit in their own tens frame. I've also seen schools that have set tens frames uh, out in the yard where it's been painted on the yard and children can go and stand in them uh, as well. Uh, another quite interesting one I saw uh, was using those photocopier uh, paper boxes as well. So using the box uh, for items that require a deeper tens frame and using the lids uh, for shallow ones uh, as well. And thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed uh, what we've been doing so far. As you've seen, we've had a very in-depth look at ten frames and we're going to continue to do that in the next session. We're going to be building this up over a few days so that we're really exploring the value of the tens frame in lots and lots of different images, uh, lots of different representations, and how it can be developed to take on uh, lots of elements uh, of early years understanding. So I look forward to seeing you for the next session. Thanks for joining me.